heart inside of my chest. My son. That's what you are to your father. You're his son. And dad, you too with the great beard, mashallah. You're your father's son. His son. If I lose my son, then I lose my future. I lose my legacy. But I ask you a question. What is a father? Whoa, whoa, big word. Big word. Raise your hand if you think your father's a role model. Everybody? Then why don't you follow him? You're a liar. You raise your hand and say your father's a role model, but you follow somebody else. What kind of man are you? Your father is your connection to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because how do you know about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You never met him. If you met the Prophet, raise your hand. Not in a dream either. I'm not saying like special people, dreams. And, like, if you met the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, raise your hand. How do you know him? From your father. He's your connection to God. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why is it that you want to be something else? Why is it you go on Instagram and you follow the imposters? Why? You go on Facebook and you follow the imposters. How many of you follow the liar? Raise your hand. You're all the liars. You get it. You get it. I said, if you have an inst I said, if you follow a liar, then raise your hand. And nobody raised their hand. Somebody's lying. <laughs> you get the point. Because the, the little blue thing says follow. It's blue. It says follow. And you, you like this guy because of his lies. Follow. <laughs> He's teaching you how to lie to yourself. How many people like gangster rap? Don't do me like that. Who like gangster rap? Everybody like a little bit of gangster rap. Don't come on. It's, it's 2020, bro. We in Stoke on Trent. They told me about these ends. They told me about what go on right away. I know where I'm at. You think I don't know? You heard what Snoop Dogg said on stage. He said, You think I don't know where I'm at? I know where I'm at. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you think I don't know where I'm at? I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. I know where I came to. So I ask the question again. How many of y'all like gangster rap music? Nah, they can be shy. It's okay. I'm breaking them down anyway. <laughs> now I ask again. Who likes to be lied to? Nobody raise their hand. Well, you're a liar. Because if you like gangster rap music, then you like to be lied to. Because how does a real criminal make a record about the crimes he committed and he's still making records? He ain't in prison. He ain't got no case. He ain't going to court. He ain't got nothing. He do 20 years of, of lying about gangsters. And this is the man you want to be like. You want to sag your pants like him. You want to smoke a little bit of weed. I got you. Because of him. You want to put your money in the, uh, <laughs> you want to make your money like this, that, and take a picture like this? <laughs> you, got, you got me? You want to, uh, uh, salam alaikum. <laughs> you got me. Or, put it on your, or put it on your arm like this. That's what you want to do? And take the picture like this? <laughs> that money is fake. It's not even real. If it was real, some real gangsters would run up on him and take it. He can't flaunt it like that. Not where we from. I don't care who you are. Especially the rappers. Especially the rappers. They can't run around these hoods. Them rappers can't run around Harlem and Brooklyn. You crazy? 
They can't run around LA? You crazy? They can't run around Atlantic City? You crazy? That kind of money. It's some men out there really hungry, really starving. They gonna kill them in for that money. You got me? You ain't see what happened to Nipsey Hussle? You see it? You see the video? He was a gangster, right? He had a lyric. He had some lyrics. I'm gonna tell you how people lie. And I'm not saying anything bad about him. I don't know him. I didn't meet him personally to make a judgment on him. But I know he's influential. If you know them, see so raise your hand. Bye bye, Dad. You ain't gonna know who I'm talking about. And that's okay. If you know Nipsey Hussle, raise your hand. Come on, don't, don't do me like that. Everybody raise your hands. It's like saying you know Biggie or Tupac. Yeah. Right? He had, a, he had a lyric. I used to listen to this guy years ago. He had, a, he had a song. He said, he said, under no condition will you ever catch me slipping. He said that his Maybach was chauffeur driven. Right? You know the line. You know the line. He said the Maybach chauffeur driven. Right? And he said something about his shooters or something like that. He lied. He lied. You didn't see the point. You get the point. You see the video how he got killed. They caught him slipping. Where was his Maybach that was chauffeur driven? And the shooters with the... Where was it? They went up to the place... They went up to the place, right where he was, where he was comfortable at. His own people, right there. And they walked up and gunned the man down. Disgracefully. Shot him all in his face. But you like Nipsey Hussle, right? Man, I'm trying to have mercy on that brother. I mean, I'm not, I'm not using his death to say anything bad about him. I'm using his death to try to save you. Because the only person that you would never catch slipping... The only one who you would never catch slipping is the Rasul Soy with something. That's it. Top guy. And the men around him were real gangsters. And his message softened their hearts. Do you know who Umar was? Shit. You crazy? Anytime somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thinking they were going to trip out, Umar is like, Ya Rasulullah, let me kill him. Let me kill me, Rasulullah, Umar. He's constantly telling Umar, put your sword back. Probably gangster. But you want to be like Nipsey Hussle. You don't want to be like Umar. What's your problem? I know the problem. You got to realize what the problem is. It's a disconnection from the Rasul Sahib was saying. That's it. That's, it ain't the way you dressing. It ain't the way you lay. the way you talking. It ain't where you walk. It ain't where you live at. It ain't the fact that you got no money. It ain't that you're uneducated. It ain't the fact that you're second generation, third generation. It ain't about none of that. We are losing our love for Muhammad Sahib was saying, bro. You get me. I came in, I heard this was the border you were doing when I came in. Mole, yes, You were doing, right? And you and you all were dry. It was dry. You were like, Mole, yes, But if I, if I, under no condition, would you ever catch me slipping? Yeah, you like that. You live now. What makes you not so excited to praise the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What makes you not so excited? We need you to be proud of that. We need you to love that. We need you to connect with that. You're our sons. But why are they not proud to just stand up and go? Because maybe the older boys, 15, 16, 18, 19, you ain't proud either. You ain't proud either. And believe it or not, 18, 19, 20, they look up to you more than they look up to their fathers. You have a responsibility. <clears throat> you are not just living for yourself. You are not just an example for yourself. Mr. Under No Condition, would you ever catch me slipping? You are not just an example for yourself. The future generation of Muslims are looking up to you and they are willing to follow you even if you lead them to hell.
Now raise your hand if you want to take them to heaven. I know this ain't your intention. But here's the thing. Do you even know what your intention is? And the malak will be yet. You get the point. You get the point. The reward is by the intention, not by the deed, bro. So are you even making an intention? Are you even making an intention? Because I know your intention is not to lead them to hell, but that's what you've taken them. The point is, is that this uh, device here is allowing us to live a double life. It's allowing us to live a double life. And it's corrupting our young men and our young women. It's ruining their marriages before it even starts. It's ruining their perception of real life and responsibility before it even starts. Everybody want to be real. Who real? Raise your hand if you real. It's killing our perception of what real actually is. It's killing us. So I commend you. May Allah Ta'ala bless you for having nothing to hide. And may Allah Ta'ala forgive me and forgive all of you for what it is that you have to hide. Amen. Amen. Ibn Ali, you're saying all this stuff, you're yelling. What's the point you're making? We have to go back to the basics. We have gotten so far away from our roots that now I see a young Pakistani kid on the corner smoking weed, selling weed, ready to splash somebody, and he think he real. That ain't real. You don't come from that. I don't care. I get it. It's rough around here. I told you I know where I'm at. But still, you didn't come from that. You allowed it to come in. Because when you came here, you came here without that. The majority of the lives you've lived, even you young men, 18, 19, 20, the majority of the life you lived was a life without that. So what made that so appealing to you? What made that something that you love? What made you love being lied to? What made you love what's fake? What made you hate what's real? I'll tell you what, a disconnection from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what. And how do we bring it back to get back there? Because let me tell you something, Father. Our sons if you ask them where they're from, they're going to say, I'm from Stoke. They ain't going to say Pakistan. They ain't going to say India. They ain't going to say Bangladesh. They ain't, they ain't, listen, bro. They ain't going to say it. Young man, where you from? Where you from? Huh? Where you from? Honest, where you from? 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 Yeah. They from Stoke. Watch this. Uncle, where you from? Pakistan. Ah. Uh, where you from, Uncle? Where you from? I call you Uncle. I see the I see it's gray, but it's black, but it's getting gray. So you, you you've been upgraded to Uncle. You got me? <laughs> you got me. He's, he, he's in that, he's in that, he's in that process where he's switching over. You got me? Yeah. <laughs> where you from? Whoa. Whoa. You got me? Where you from, Uncle? Where you from, Uncle? Uh, and your and your friend next to you? Where you from? You get the point. You're still a young lad, don't worry. <laughs> you just went great first. That's fine. <laughs> you see the disconnection? Uncle, can you tell me a sentence in your language from Pakistan? Like, and not just Urdu, but like your, like, you know, whatever they speak in your village, like Paraguay or something. Kuna. 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 Right? Can you tell me a sentence in your old language? 
Yeah, you. If you can't say no. No? Can you? You don't know. That's a good answer. I don't know is always the best answer to give when you actually don't know. Right? And I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to show you a disconnection. These young men think they from Stoke. You ain't from Stoke. You from Pakistan, like your father. You from India, like your dad. You get it? That's where you from. We're going to try this again. Where you from? Where you from? Where you from? Where you from? That's where you from. And you live in Stoke. You got me? And you need to learn your language. And it's not their fault that they don't know their language. A person can only learn what he's taught. It ain't their fault they don't know their language. But why don't they know their language? When a person, I'm a black man from America, descendant of the slaves. I ain't Ethiopian, I ain't Nigerian, I ain't Somalian, I ain't none of that. I'm black from America. We are descendants of the slaves. I don't know why I'm from in Africa. The first thing they did was not let us speak our language. Put us on a slave ship, you can't speak your language. Right? The second thing they did was put us in these clothes that all looked alike. And you all don't think, you think you're so clever in the way that you dress, but you still all look exactly alike. The coat with the hood, the jeans that's tight at the sneakers, and the sne you, you, get, you, you get the point. Bubble coat, bubble coat, bubble coat, Nike, Nike, Nike. You look just alike, right? And you, you got a koofy on, I'm going to do that. But. They took my language, they put us in those clothes that weren't ours, they stripped of our, of, of our dress, they took us from our homeland, after they did those three things, they took <coughs> Muhammad sorry, with something from us, and they took our religion and gave us white Jesus. Y'all want white Jesus? No. So why are you giving away your language and your homeland and your dress? Why are you not proud of your father's land? You're his son. But father, you're his father. Are you proud of your land? Did you show him anything that would make him not proud of his land? Did you make him learn English and say, you're not going to learn this old language. Make sure you learn this English so you can get a good job. And that same uh, raising him for that education and that proper English, right? To speak like the white boys. Right? It's the same reason why we lost him. Same reason why we lost him. And I ain't saying your father was wrong for wanting you to have a better life than he had. Your father was 100% correct in that. He came here, he worked, 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 worked. He's still working. <clears throat> he made you get an education so you wouldn't have to work so hard. But then you got your education and you thought you were better than your father and you became soft. How are you going to be his future and his legacy like that? And father, how are you going to connect him to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when you disconnect him from the language in which you learned about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because you didn't learn about him in English? We have to reconnect. We absolutely have to reconnect. I don't care how you do it. I ain't saying don't wear your Nikes, bro. I'm not saying don't wear your, your, your you know, do your thing, whatever. You English, you from Britain, straight up, I get it. You ain't from Pakistan, I get it. I ain't even, whatever. But you gotta find a way to connect back to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the greatest way for you to do that is to reconnect with your father. Go have a conversation with your dad. 
talk to him. Explain to him, this is what's going on, dad. What do I do about this? What do I do about that? Talk to your father about sex. You thinking about it? You thinking about it? Go ask your father a question. He would love to talk to you. But in your culture, he ain't gonna come to you and say, son, you okay? He ain't gonna, they, these men, they rudge you, man. They got time for these games. You better be okay, hard as I work. You better be all right, as hard as I work, right? You better be well, you better do good as hard as I work. But if you came to him and said, bye bye, listen, I gotta talk to you. He's gonna be like, whoa, he can take his top of whoa. My son wants to talk to me? I thought you forgot about me, son. I thought you were embarrassed of me, son. I thought you were losing love for me, son. I thought you were losing respect for me, son. You want to talk to me? Well, hey, son, let's sit down and have a tea. Let's talk. I'm, you got my undivided attention. Because before you were embarrassed about him, he was your hero. He put you up on his shoulders. You remember when your father used to pick you up? You remember that? Yeah, you remember that. He put you on your shoulders and you never want to get down. You remember that? Guess what? Your father remembers when he was a little boy on his father's shoulders too. And even though you got this big old beard now down to your chest, he would still absolutely love to pick you up and put you on his shoulders. But his back is not as strong as it used to be. He can't throw you and catch you anymore. Trust me, if you allow him back into your heart, he can take your heart and throw it up. Catch it and throw it up again. He can help you maneuver through this crazy world that you're living in. He can help you make decisions and find a woman. He can help you make decisions and find your money. He can help you make decisions and find yourself, your father. But you got to let him back in. And Father, I need you to understand that the world that your children are living in has come with a fitness that you have never experienced. The prophet said things are going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse into the end of times. There ain't no teacher nowhere who say, I don't see any signs at the end of time. Everybody's saying, we see the signs. This is the world your sons are living in. And so we need you. Listen, Father, be my father. Come out to me and say, son, I want to have a talk with you. Let me tell you about girls. Because as much as things change, some things just stay the same. All right, y'all got DMs. Right, we got DMs. Your father just write a little letter or something, send a note. Same thing, men and women, same thing. The difference is your father can never uh, look at her aura on the cell phone. He couldn't do that. So he wasn't corrupted the way that we're corrupted. In the middle of the night, you're supposed to be praying to Hajda, and you on the cell phone. Your father ain't have no cell phone. As a matter of fact, if I get the cell phones of all the older men in here with great beards, they literally only use the cell phone to make calls. Could you believe that? You use the phone for everything other than making calls. And it is killing us from the inside out. So there is a conversation that is not being had that we need to have. Let this be the beginning of that conversation. And that conversation is a real conversation. A conversation between father and son. A conversation between your connection to Allah and the Rasul Sallallahu and a conversation between uh, your future and your legacy. We need to have these conversations. It is a crime to let these young men continue to grow and never to talk to them about what they're going to see when they go outside your doors and outside your communities. 
And guess what, young man? It's a crime if you don't listen. It's a crime. And because you haven't listened, it's why you out here on the ends out in Stoke committing crimes. Your boy's dying, getting strung out on drugs. Little Fatima, little Khadija, she out here being loose. Because we didn't listen. That ain't our father's fault, that's our fault. That's our fault. They got nothing to do with my dad, nothing to do with my mom. They set me up nicely. I didn't listen. And may Allah Ta'ala help us. May Allah Ta'ala reconnect our families. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to have conversations that have some reason become taboo. Say Ameen. Ameen. May Allah not let us hide behind the parts of our culture that make us disconnected. And may Allah Ta'ala allow uh, these young men to add to the culture. Amen. Let them bring what they have into the culture that they're from. <clears throat> Stop telling them they're wrong and they're bad all the time. Stop making jokes about them all the time. You're breaking their heart. Stop judging them all the time. You're breaking their hearts. We'll end on this and then we'll open up for questions or statements. You don't have a question, you can make a statement. The Prophet saw his son and he said something that means whatever elders do not have mercy on the youth and whatever young people do not have respect for their elders, then neither are from his nation. You need to ask yourself, are you from the nation of Muhammad? And if you are, then this connection between elders and youth is the most important connection that we have. Because it's how we'll have transgenerational success. Without this connection, our Islam is going to be cut off. May Allah Ta'ala protect you and me, my father and your father, my son and your son from being disconnected and cut off from Rasulullah the greatest gift that Allah Ta'ala has ever given us. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all look like y'all want to hurt me. No, 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 Bismillah. Some of y'all look like y'all want to hurt me. It's okay. I love you. And, and later on in your life, you're going to leave here, and in three weeks' time, or four weeks' time, or maybe four years, you'll say, Ah. I love you. I love you especially. So we'll start here first. You raise his hand first, then we'll come to you. And after three older men, we're going to need three younger men. You got me? So after one, two, then it's you in the green. You got me? So yeah, you. Get your question together. Go. How was your relationship with your father previously? So my father got killed when I was one. That's why this topic is so important to me. I, I, what was the title of today's topic? Keeping it real. You got that? I I said one sentence about keeping it real. And all I said about keeping it real was don't be fake. But my whole talk was about keeping it real. What's real to me is a, is a relationship between father and son. That's important to me. That's, that's important to me, man. Seriously, that's important to me. And my father, he got killed. And I got a lot of kids. And I, I, I missed him growing up. I miss my dad, man. Like, Rahimahullah. I miss my dad, yo. I thought, yeah. The greatest hold I got in my heart. 
I didn't even know I needed my dad. I didn't even know I needed him until I got married and had kids. Until my sons got big and started asking me questions. I didn't even know I needed my dad, bro. So if I come in front of some young people, I'm going to be real with them. And I'm going to tell them, bro, use your dad while you got him. Because if he die, he gone. And you, and you, and you going to be up here crying like me, like a little baby. You're gonna be crying like a little like a little punk. You're gonna be up here crying. Like I miss my dad. Don't come crying to me. Cause I'ma say, if you ain't respectful, listen to me why and why why he was alive, get out of my face. I'ma tell you, if you had your dad while he was alive, he was there for you. He was there for you. In your house, not in your house, but you could touch him. You can have a conversation with him. Call him on the phone. If you ain't listen to him, then don't, I don't want to see your tears when he died. You're a liar. You got him. Because you got him right now. And I, and I have a, I have a lot to Isla. He put me in, um, in popularity. So a lot of young people know me. So if I can tell a young man anything, I'm going to tell you about the greatest thing that you could ever do. Respect your mother and your father. That's the message I got. Because once they die, they are gone. You can't call him and ask him for nothing. My dad died when I was one. That's 29 years ago, bro. My dad been dead for 29 or 20, whatever. He been dead all my life. And it still feels like he died yesterday. You actually had your father your whole life. Could you imagine what it's going to feel like when he died? I got 28 years of practice. But I'm still crying when the man asks a question about my relationship with my dad. You get it? How you going to be? And your dad didn't die yet. But you're going to remember what I'm saying today once he died. Don't have no regrets. Because watch this. Hey, uncle. Excuse me, Bismillah. This is uh, English. This is we, uh, Black America. We speak in a different way of. So we say death. We don't. Mashallah, Mashallah, Mashallah. So when your father passes away, he's the point that he's making because some, he's saying because something that died, there's nothing else for him. But we're Muslims. You die in this life, then you go to the eternal abode. You, you, you get, so he's saying he just passed away from this life. That's the point he's making about me saying die. A plant dies and that's it. You get it? So this is the point that, that he's making, right? Well, watch this. Uncle, is, did your father die? Oh, did your father pass away? Excuse me? Rahimahullah. Do you miss him? Do you think about him? I'm praying for him. Every day? When, how, how many years since your father passed away? My father passed away 14 years. 14 years ago? And when did your father pass away? How many years? Maybe 15. 15? Yeah. But we still going to pay the parents. And he's been, so for 15 years, 14 years, they've been praying for their fathers every single day. His father, his father, his father, his father, his father. All the Ummah. You get the point? When they think of their fathers, they still feel like little boys. They remember, he used to, you remember he used to throw you up? Yeah. MashaAllah. You remember how you feel? He's your hero. Yeah. Is he the one that told you about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He taught you about Allah? Yes. He took you to Quran teacher? Took you to Hadith teacher? Try everything, you know, what he can. You see? And now your father is doing the same thing for you. 
So this relationship between father and son, it has nothing to do with age. It is a sacred relationship that you have for eternity in this life and in the next life. I asked you in the beginning, what's a son? I asked you in the beginning, what's a father? I asked you, and you all said all these things. If it's true, then honor the relationship now. Because once he passes away, you will not have the chance. The only thing you can do for him is pray. And may Allah Ta'ala uh, increase us in piety so that way we pray for our deceased relatives, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, that Allah Ta'ala accept from us and raise that rank. Amen. Amen. Al-Fatiha for his father. Al-Fatiha. Amen. You had a question? How do you strike a balance? Because sometimes when you try to discipline your kids, they say they be too strict. And then on one side, you know, all their friends teeth that you tell them about rules, gay friends. And then they try to be strict. And, you know, for example, if you try to be strict, Oh, you don't let them go off with the father. Well, you know deep down, you can trust them. Well, you don't want them to be affected. So you try to discipline them. You feel okay, but sometimes it can go with the other Yeah. This is a tricky one. And each culture is different. So first and foremost, let me say that, that I don't know your culture well enough to do the answer justice. Let me say that first. Because you all have a rich tradition of where you come from and certain ways and etiquettes of doing things. That maybe in my culture, we don't have that. So so uh, how you would usually deal with your children may be different than how I would deal with my children. Or my father, how he dealt with me, may be different than how your father dealt with you. So I don't want to give uh, miscorrect advice. So I'll answer the question generally. Right? Say some things that go to any culture, anyone. The very, very first thing is that um, the prophet saw his he said, which means that, he said, which means, right, that uh, when you take something away from a child, a young person, you take something out of one hand, you put something else in the other hand. Right? And, and, and we have, I, I don't know how good we are, I'm not that good at it as a parent. Because my son, you're going to listen to me, or, you got me? <laughs> That's how I was raised. You know what I mean? So the point is, it's not what I go. The point that I'm making is this. When you have to be strict on them in one way or hard on them in one way, you gotta be hard. That's how they learn a life lesson. But you gotta follow that up with love. And you and, and you gotta find a way to crack the crack the violence of loving them. Even if he's acting like, don't kiss my cheek, dad. You know, he's a little boy, kiss him. He loves you, kiss you back. Then he gets big. Come on, let me kiss your cheek. Right? Uh, my son's six. I kiss his cheek. He goes, ah. They used to love me. Kiss my nose. My, get my boogies in my nose. <laughs> right? He used to love me. But now he, he's six. He's only six. I kiss him on the cheek. My ah, dad. Right? So we, as parents, we have to do a good job at, I got to be strict on you, son, because it's a real life out there. And if I don't teach you this lesson at home, you're going to learn this lesson outside. And I don't want you to learn it in the hard way where you're going to get hurt. Right? But you have to do a good job that you take something away from him, replace, replace it with something loving, something good. The second thing is trust yourself in the way that you're raising your children and don't worry about being the bad guy. So you got to have tough skin. It says, I don't like you. Blah, 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 whatever. Okay, don't like me then. Because your father, he never cared if you liked him or not. Your father did not care if you like him or not. He raised you, and you're going to be a man. And there's a piece of that element that we have to gain back. Your son don't run your house. You run your house. Your son ain't even paying his phone bill. You paying the phone bill. How are you going to make you spend your money how he wants you to spend your money? He don't even work. So... Even with this having a reverse effect, is that you, you cannot you cannot shy away from.
guiding them to what's right and protecting them. Uh, you cannot uh, shy away from uh, 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 forbidding what's wrong and making them enjoying what's good because they may go the other way. Because then after that, you have to have tawakkul. You, you do the right thing, and then you have to trust Allah. Right? And you, and you have to trust what, what, what Allah Ta'ala says is that no one can be guided or, 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 or if Allah, when Allah guides someone, no one can lead them astray. And if Allah Ta'ala leads them astray, then no one can guide them. You, you got to accept that. Even if it's my son or your son. You're not the one who can guide them. Allah Ta'ala can guide them. You're the one who can teach them about Allah. Tell them about Allah. Tell them about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tell them about what he says, what he does. But you, but, you, but you can't choose if they're good or bad. That's not for you. That's not your place. You're, only, you're just his father. But Allah Ta'ala is his Lord. And so you got to pray for him. More than anything, more than any uh, punishment, restriction, anything, you have to pray for your baby boy and pray for your daughter. You have to go on your knees to your Lord, middle of the night with tears in your eyes. Oh, Allah, help my children. That's the key. Especially in the times that we live in now, the, the tahajjah is all we got. And about peer pressure, you can't do nothing about peer pressure except raise them well. Right? Because you don't know that they're being pressured by their peers until something bad happens. That's the only way you know that they got peer pressure because something bad happens. Something bad never happens, you don't know how much pressure that peers are putting on them. And so, this prayer in the night for our children is the greatest tool that we got. And may Allah Ta'ala increase us in that. Amen. Amen. Okay, young man in the green. Uh, what's Islam like around from where you're from? Obviously, in Stoke and in the parts of the UK, there's a lot of uh, Muslim communities, and what's it what's like in, in America from where you're from? In one way, I would say where I'm from, Islam is. Because you gotta understand, I'm from black America. We came there as slaves, they oppressed, we couldn't even vote for a president to the 60s, right? They got mass incarceration, right? All, everyone's in the jails, every, they put guns in our community, right? Where did, where, where did some guy who can't even read or write, black guy, get a, get a gun this big that shoot 50 bullets in a second? Where he get this at? <coughs> he don't know nobody that make this, he don't know, where, where, where we, we live in, we, they call it concrete jungles where we live at, right? So where do we get whole uh, kilos of cocaine? Where do we get that? We ain't growing in the hood. Where do we get pounds and pounds of, we ain't growing in the hood. Where do we get kilos of heroin? We ain't growing in the hood. They grow it in Pakistan or Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> you got the point, right? Who helped they get from there to there? How did this guy that I grow with grow up with is able now to buy ten kilos every other week? How? So, so, so that's been an agenda against black men, and Islam has saved us. The way it saved the Sahaba, Islam has saved us, bro. It has given us dignity, and has and it has made us fight off oppression and gave us lives worth living. But then on the flip side. A lot of my people from the ghetto, they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but they blow your head off. Hey, bro, they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but you better watch how you walk past them. So, so my culture, we have a culture, right? So even though we became Muslims, we didn't lose our culture. And, 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 and in our culture, is uh, the only thing that we respect uh, more than like this, uh, this you know, bad boy attitude is the attitude of Islam. But like you, like all of us, we losing our young people to the streets. It ain't just happening to you. It's an agenda against the Muslims around the world, bro. Everybody got a rotten apple in their pocket. You got a rotten apple. Who else got a rotten apple? You got a rotten apple? <laughs> rotten apples stink. 
open up your safari, you get what I'm talking about. So the same thing that you that, that's killing your community, killing my community too. Same bad things you look at on the cell phone, we look at on the cell phone too. Same ganja you smoke, we smoking ganja too. Right? It ain't just about Stoke. It ain't just black America. It ain't just Slough or London and Bristol. It it's not just that, bro. This is a problem of the times. And you know how we got like that? Because they killed our fathers. They killed them and took the rest of them to jail. Then they came in our community and gave us drugs and guns like, like this. You see this water pouring? They poured in the community like that, drugs and guns. Poured it just like that. And so Islam, where I'm from, is just like Islam is here. You got a couple brothers trying to learn to study. That's it. Nobody's supporting the master. Nobody's supporting the master. Nobody helping the imam. Everybody, the doctor's more important than the imam is. Right? Young guy on the street, it's real hard for him to find a place in the master. He feel like he's being judged all the time. He feel like he's being judged all the time. Same thing. So Islam, where I'm from, is the same thing Islam is here. It's real. And if you tap into it, you can be real too. Or you can be like how they are where I'm from and continue to be fake. Same decision, same choice. Right? Same illnesses, right? And, 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 the, same, um, and the same cure for the disease. For the Rasul, sorry, what's up? Yeah. So don't be fooled about all these imposters that you see from where I'm from. We don't want nothing to do with them. They puppets. They ain't men. They puppets. They ain't real. They puppets, bro. So please, if you were following them, I'm telling you, we ain't got no respect for them. Trust me. Bismillah. We want another young man's question. You right here in the blue hoodie. Youngsters in the master, love them. Love them. He smell like weed, I don't care. Come on, bro. He on the ends, I don't <laughs> care. Come on, bro. You know, sorry about the better when he came in and he pissed in the master. They just cleaned it up. A little bit of water. He don't know. They were, they were uh, messing with this man who was in the Sahaba who was a drunk. The Prophet said, him, said, leave him alone. I know he drank, whatever, leave him alone. He, he believed in Allah. He loved the Rasul, so he said, him, leave him alone, he'll be okay. Just don't judge him. The reason why the youngsters don't come in the mass yet is because they scared of the mass yet. They scared, bro. They feel like they're going to come in and I'm going to get a talk. Just bring him in. Don't say nothing to him. Because the, 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 the beauty of the gathering, and the, I tell you something about the mass shit. You know, they asked the, the man came to the Prophet and said, "What's the best place in the, in the world? The worst place in the world?" He said, "I don't know." Ask Jibril. Jibril said, "I don't know." He asked Allah. Allah tells Jibril. Jibril come back to Allah. They say the, the worst place in the world is the marketplace. <laughs> and the proof of that is where everybody buy drugs around the shops. Any place you want to go buy some weed, some coke. Whatever it is, you go where the stores are. I'm right or wrong. Just find the local store, find where they hang out at, and that's where you're gonna find it. Am I right? Am I right or wrong? That's what it is. The marketplace. It's gonna have everything bad. And he said the best place is the masjid. Even if you're not saying nothing to them, you have invited them into the best space they can ever be in in this entire dunya. It's going to have an effect on them. Even if they, they just sit on the musala and be quiet. They come in and go right out. Just the mirror coming in. You know the benefits of entering the masjid? But the point is, is if you love them, they're going to want to come back to the masjid. So that's what I would say. Just love them, don't judge them. 
have a game night or something. I don't know, right? PS2, FIFA, you guys like football, right? Like, do like you know something, you know? But don't but don't judge them. Whatever you do, however you gotta do it, just don't judge them. Let them come as they are and love them. They're gonna leave changed. You might not see it first day, first year, second year, but in the course of their life, you're gonna see like they're gonna you, they're gonna change. They're gonna change because you want to be a part of their lives while they're still young, because you're only going to be young for a little while. And Imam Ali, he has a statement where he says, young people have the kind of disease that can only be cured by old age. So you just want to love them enough to see them through their young years. And once you see him through their young years, he's going to get older. Like this man have a little bit of gray. He used to be crazy too, don't worry about it. He evened out. I ain't gonna tell him everything. They told me about you. No, 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 no. <laughs> you see the laugh though? He's grinning ear to ear. <laughs> him and his boys are worse than you. Trust me. He from Stoke too. <laughs> so you have to love them long enough to see them through their young years. Inshallah. Uh, uh, in the back, a man had his hand raised. Yes. What advice can you give to the brothers from our community who are fighting with each other? And I don't mean just like a fist fight. You mean like stabbing and killing? Yeah, we're getting knives out, some machetes, and some that we use. I'm um, scared from our community, it seems like someone's been that killed. So, what advice could you give to them? So, in America, we got gun violence. We got gun violence. And the thing with a gun is, to stand back up. I'm going to show you something. Stand back up. Show you something. No, 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 I ain't, ain't going to shoot you. <laughs> right? You can, a gun, you can be a coward. From where you at, where I'm at right now, you're a dead man. I don't got to touch you. I don't have to come near you. I got to do nothing. Right? So, but in your community, you don't have guns that much. You got knives. Stand up. In order for me to kill you, because we don't use swords like the Sahaba. I got a little blade, this big maybe, kitchen knife, whatever. I gotta come to you. That's that's close contact. So first and foremost, you need to know the man stabbing this man, he ain't no punk. He's coming like this. This is this is close. This is intimate. You get this close with your wife. <laughs> this is intimate, bro. Sit down. The point that I'm making is this. You can sit. The point that I'm making is this, like what we see at home, the only time somebody stabs somebody up is when they're very, 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 very angry. Like if you want to kill a man, you know, for business principles or or for, I don't know, like if you want to kill a man just for something, you just shoot him, bang, bang, bang. It's over, no blood on me, no blood on you, right? It's over, I, I, I killed you, I go away, I run away, I get away, I, I got away with murder, right? But this knife crime that you all have, this is personal. And so b before, you, before you begin to fight the knife crime, you have to ask yourself, why are these young men so angry? Why are they so angry? You have to first get to the root. What's the root? Usually. Not against ego. I tell you it's the root. All of that comes from shaitan. All of that comes from arrogance, ego. Keep going, keep going. Shaitan, 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 shaitan. And so those young men, the only way to get to them is through their hearts. The only way to get to them is through their hearts. And the only way to get to their hearts is from love of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa And I know you're probably thinking like, how just loving the Rasul going to stop them from killing each other? Because once you love the Rasul, so he would tell them, you're going to realize your life is worth living and your life is not worth wasting. But they wasting their life because they don't have nothing to live for, man. What we giving them to live for? We throwing them away. They ain't coming to the man shit because we ain't giving them no love. And so... The, and, and so the first thing that we have to do is show them, one, that we love them. 
The second thing we got to do is show them that as a together, we ain't scared of them. And you don't run my community. Those two things. That's the advice I give. As, as a community, they need some serious love. And then on the flip side, they need people to stand up to, sh I ain't scared of you. You don't run this community. We will run you out of this community. The Prophet saw his they did it at the Battle of Badr. They were outnumbered. They were outnumbered, and they ran the Kufar out of there. We the Muslims, right? We the Muslims, right? Well, the answer to that is, we got to be the Muslims, not just inside the masjid, outside the masjid. And before the Muslim shows harshness, he shows love. Because before the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he fought a war with anybody, before he, before he uh, uh, showed harshness to anybody, he first invited them to Islam. He first opened up his heart to them. He did that first. They denied that, and then he showed them harshness to protect Islam. So I would say first, Show the, invite these young boys in, man. Give them some love, man. Because guess what? Your kids, that's what they look up to. But if you could flip that, that one young man, he might be the imam. He might be the leader of the community. And if you don't believe the, the love of the Prophet, so I tell him, right, uh, can change the hearts of men, then you don't know the Sahaba. These men were the worst, man. Before revelation. When they believed in our suicide was them, they became the best men to ever walk the face of this earth. So much so, whenever we say their names, we say, May Allah be pleased with them. Amen. And may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with all of us and those young men out there killing each other on their status. Amen. Amen. You make dua. Okay, one last question from a young man, then we'll go. You kick me out, it's okay. You kick me out, I got you, I go. You don't gotta beat me up, I go. Listen to that. How and when did you convert to Islam? I was born Muslim. Okay, sure. We were my whole uh, my mom, my dad converted at ten. He came a Muslim on his own. He didn't have no dad. His dad was a gangster and a pimp, my grandpa. Right? He was a pimp, bro, right? And um in a in a drug he was a crazy man, right? Ain't my dad didn't have no dad. He became a Muslim on his own because one of my aunts became Muslim some years before that, and he had a special love for her. And her husband treated him well. You see? And my daddy was a gangster, you hear me? My dad ain't no um Nah bro. You I, I hear about these guys on TV. I don't care about none of them. I don't care about no gangster rapper. I don't care about no gangster movie. I don't care, but my dad was a gangster, bro. And he died like that. He was a Muslim, Rahimahullah. But he died like that. That don't please me. Right? And his uncle, my uncle uh, Hamid, uh, and we say Hamid like Hamid, but we didn't know Arabic, we say Hamid, right? So my uncle Hamid, he came, my, my, he came, my father came to him in Trenton, New Jersey, I want to be a Muslim. And, and he gave him Shahada, mashallah, at 10. And my mom, she converted in like the 80s. She was like 16 or something. Because they, they were trying to ch save their lives. But I was born in 1990. Me and all my cousins was born Muslims. Like my whole, I got the biggest Muslim family in the city. Like it's no, nobody got more Muslims. And it's not, it's not a boat. Whoa, mashallah, I, I guess I am. But the point is that we just have a lot of kids. So, <laughs> man, everybody got a lot of kids. Five kids, eight kids, six kids. Yeah, so, my family, everybody had a lot of kids, right? We started young. So we got the most Muslims. So uh, my family, alhamdulillah, um, nah, me and my whole age group, and not even just my family, majority of my friends, majority of the guys from the ghetto, right? They were born Muslims. Their names Rahim, Abdurrahman, Saeed, Naeem, Rashid, like this, Ali, like, yeah, Umar. Like, that's how, like, yeah, we were born Muslims, right? One second. And your question would be the last one. But to be fair, when did I start taking Islam serious and taking the practice of Islam serious? Shadi got killed. My cousin got killed. You got a cousin that you love 
He's more than your cousin, though. He's your friend. You know, he was your friend every E, every, like, that's your boy, Sahaba. You got a cousin like that? He was my cousin like that. I was taller than him, but he was my big cousin. And he was, bro, he was rugged. I can't, like, this man was brave. And I used to feel safe with him, and then he got killed, protecting his little sister. And when he got killed, it just, it, you know, it broke, death, the mama saw something said, death is the reminder to the believers. Death is the reminder to the believers. And so I was reminded. And so I ran to the masjid. And when I got to the masjid, I was 19. To answer the other question, they gave me love, man. They gave me so much love. I got addicted, bro. Because I'm coming to the masjid smelling like weed. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just telling you that. I'm telling from my own experience. Nah, man, they didn't kick me out. They didn't treat me bad. They hugged me, they loved me. They taught me the border. And and so my cousin dying, that's what took me to the mat. Because in my community, if you want to be a man, it's time to be a man, stop playing games, you can be a good Muslim. That's what we see in our fathers do. We see them be gangsters, and when they want to fix their lives, they be Muslims. Well, I can follow. So we follow our fathers. I want to be a man, I'm gonna be a good Muslim. So death, I went to the master. But the Imam and the brothers, they gave me so much love, man. They gave me too much love, bro. They gave me, they still giving me love. And so the love is what kept me in the mad shit. And then when I, when, then when I got addicted to just coming and praying and eating with the brothers, they didn't even open up a book for a while. For a while. Just feeding, talking. I'm like, man, that's the best. I'm gonna go to the mad shit, kick and hang out. And then one day, he opens up a book. Alhamdulillah, and he says, call Rasulullah. That's all she wrote, bro. I got, I got hooked. And now I'm here with you. Right? That was like 11, 10, 11 years ago. Right? So I'm saying it can happen. And may Allah Ta'ala forgive me for all the sins that you don't know that I'm committing. That mean. I mean, I ain't mean. saying I'm perfect. I ain't saying I'm nobody. I'm not saying that nothing happened. But what I'm saying is, is my people died in the streets. And that death was a reminder. But the love is what got us to where we at. MashaAllah. May Allah Ta'ala uh, reward all of the men who gave me love long enough for me to realize that my life was worth living. Right? Mm -hmm. Last question. At what age should the children have a phone? Uh, what age should we give our children a phone? Y'all, please don't get mad at me, right? I ain't your dad. Don't get mad at me. Don't give him a phone at all. <laughs> The age they have a phone when he can pay. They nowadays, what they do is when they go to school and that, they see all the kids have a phone and like, oh, look, they've got a phone, he's got so? a phone. So? Nowadays, you've got kids uh, like nine, year, nine years old, ten years old, you've got iPhones. And Bro, I ain't get a cell phone until I worked and paid for one. Your dad didn't get a cell phone until he worked and paid for one. Period. What business he handling? What do you gotta do? Who you gotta call, bro? What do you gotta do? He got some money to make? He got a mortgage to pay? He got a wife calling for he ain't got no kids. <laughs> they don't need no phone, bro. That's these things are brand new. You how old are you? You ain't even have no phone when you was 10. You didn't. Because just 12 years ago, things were, 12 years ago, we were still using flip phones. Nobody had an iPhone. Only the drug that had an iPhone, they only could afford it. That's what it is nowadays when kids go phone and break it. The next thing they expect you to get them another one. You know what I'm saying? You know how much these things cost? I got my wife a new one. You see mine. I, psh, psh. My kids make fun of my phone. They say it's a remote. <laughs> Dad's gonna watch TV. <laughs> you get it? I want to use mom's phone. You know I get it? It's all big and stupid and costs a thousand dollars. Point I'm making is this: this, these things have become that access to the the job. This has become the access to the the job, bro. You ain't gotta believe me. 
You ain't even gotta believe me. It's destroying most of our lives. And nah, it's my, you 22, keep it real, you shouldn't even have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> not not say I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I but he got business to handle. <laughs> Let me see your DM. <laughs> you Keep it real, bro. I'm struggling with a cell phone. You, you see, I'm supposed to be studying Instagram, right? I got I got Sahib Bukhari in front of me. I have the most authentic book after the Quran right in front of me. What more you want? All of them. Kutub Sita. Boom, 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 boom. I spent two minutes in the book, 10 minutes on the phone. Two minutes in my book, 20 minutes on the phone. One minute in my book, an hour on my phone. Maybe I'll download an app to get the ID quicker. <laughs> I'll read the Quran on the phone. So, that, so, when it, so when the message comes in, I, I can read Quran, but I don't miss the message. It's killing our focus. It's killing our focus, bro. And so my answer is, I don't think anybody needs a cell phone until they work, until they have a, a, a purpose and a, a use for the cell phone. And I don't think anybody should have a cell phone until he or she can work to own their own cell phone. Period. The world moving fast, but the world ain't moving that fast. He only going to school. He only going to school. And you ain't have to call your mom every day after school either. So why he got to call me after? You better be home by 3 o'clock. You, you get me? You better be home by 3 o'clock. And if you ain't home by 3 o'clock, you ain't going out tomorrow. That's it. That's it. And if you want to use a phone so bad, son, use my phone. Let's see how bad they want to phone in. If it's just about the, cause, cause your dad don't use the cell phone anyway. He just call. You want to use the phone so bad? Say so use my phone. Make it DM. You only need privacy because if what you do with this phone was in public, you would be embarrassed. If it's just about using the phone, here use mine. No, you you want to keep it private because you don't want to be embarrassed. But what you're doing that you're embarrassed about. And may Allah Ta'ala protect us from that. Amen. 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 Amen.